Thank you, Arthur. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son who came in his first incarnation as a little baby. He came in humility. He came to live the life that we live. He came to show us how to live. We thank you that he is, Christ is our example of humility, of a life spent serving God, serving you, Father, and serving others. So Lord, we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and on his cross this morning, and we pray that you would speak to us. We ask this in your Son's name and by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I read a story about two holy men who met in a coffee shop and they were spending time discussing humility. And one said to the other, he says, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been meditating, I've been studying religion for 20 years and I have finally reached the correct level of humility. I truly am a nothing. And the other holy man nodded gravely and said, I too have spent my life devoted to serving God. I also am a nothing. At that moment, the barista in the coffee shop came past, cleaning the tables, overheard the conversation, and being a a follower of God himself, uh, nodded and said, yes, you're right. I also know, I also am a nothing. And as the uh, as he, he, he walked away, the two men looked at each other and discussed and said, who does he think he is saying he's a nothing like us? <laughs> so humility and pride are two characteristics that have been around since creation, haven't they? And in today's society, we see pride always on display, don't we? Pride, selfishness, self-interest, false superiority, it's always on show. And what does society and culture tell us about how the world works? It tells us that it's all about me, it's all about you, the world revolves around us. Culture tells us that we, you, I are the center, the center of our own lives. And in fact, we should be the center of everyone else's lives. It tells us that it's okay to be self-centered, that selfishness is okay. And that the root uh, root of selfishness is pride. Now, there are good kinds of pride. There's the pride of seeing family and friends succeed. There's pride in watching our children grow and mature. There's pride, there's pride in, in seeing people within our community succeed. There's pride with seeing our, our community of faith sharing. There's pride in belonging and to a family, to a community, to a church in a way that honors God, honors the God that we follow. And it's okay to take care of ourselves and have self-worth and be proud of ourselves and how far we've come and what we've accomplished. But there's a deadly kind of pride and an overemphasis of self that corrupts from within. And I think there's a video on the screen that we can we watch for a wee minute. It's all about me. Really. It is all about you. Now, the greatest collection of me worship ever assembled on one CD. It's all about now I lift my name on high. All 20 songs, all about you. This amazing collection is great to share with friends, if you have any. Everyone can join in the worship with you, for you, and about you. Because you are unique, and you love you. There is none like me. No one else All this can for do only $19.95. Like Operators do. are standing by to serve you. And I am why I sing. And I am why I live. If you order now, you'll also receive a second CD of Yule Tide Favorites. I sing. No. One eight hundred, me, 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 or order online at me, myself, and I dot com. Call today because no one can praise you like you. 
was meant to be entertaining and tongue in cheek, but it does show kind of our human condition, doesn't it? Um, I would like to say with that uh, Christmas collection is like, we'll talk to Paul Good about that. Um, but we, we spend so much time really elevating ourselves and thinking of ourselves, don't we? And the problem comes when we become the focus of everything, when we become the focus of our worship. And the writer says, uh, uh, called Jeff Cook, and I think it's on the screen there, it says, a pride is not possessing extraordinary talents or viewing our skills highly or even showcasing our gifts and talents for the benefit of others. Pride instead spurs me to view myself as the only one in the entire world who matters, to think that I have somehow earned the prime spot in the universe and now all of creation is a grand symphony celebrating me. Pride is not thinking too much of myself. Pride is thinking of myself far too much. So when thinking of ourselves far too much becomes a posture of our hearts, we take God off the throne and we make him kind of one of the supporting cast in our lives. And we have these two postures here in our Bible passage as Ozzy read for us, with two men who went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and one a tax collector. Now both go up to pray, they go up to give God the, the worship, they go to the center of worship in their, in their society and in their culture, they go up to the temple. But they both, when they both go up to pray, they come to God in very different ways. They didn't come to meet God, to pray to God in the same way. One says, I'm great. I'm justified before the Lord. I'm better than him over there. And we're told that the tax collector stands by himself and he praises himself and he compares himself to other people around him. And it isn't very hard to have a high opinion of yourself when you compare yourself to other people. Um, it's often not too difficult to find someone who's worse than you are, is it? But the Pharisee is, who is the Pharisee talking about or talking to? He's speaking with himself, he's not speaking with God. And in his short prayer, he uses the word I five times. He says, I'm not like other people. I'm better. In fact, I fast twice a week. I give my tithe. I do all the right things. And he did do all the right things, but he didn't do it with the right heart. He didn't do it with a humble heart. While anyone who listened to him might have said, oh, wow, he's really holy. He's really making himself the, the holy one. He's not focusing the, or, or reflecting the holiness of God himself. And the holiness of God himself is power and strength and goodness. And rather than relying on God, he relies on his own power and his own deeds. Whereas the tax collector comes and he throws himself on the mercy and compassion of God. And unlike the, the Pharisee, the tax collector says, I know who I am. I know what I am. I know I'm fallen. I know I'm unworthy. And he recognized who he was. He was, un, he was weak and unable to work in his own power. He knew he needed God. And when we uh, compare our own power and our own deeds with the power and strength and love and goodness and compassion of God, which one is ultimately more powerful? Which one is ultimately more lasting? And who is ultimately more able? It's God, isn't it? It's through God that Paul tells us that we can do all things. Through Christ, we can do all things. And in the ESV, it says that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I like the good news version of, of this uh, verse. It says, I have the strength to face all conditions. I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. This is where our pride should be, not in thinking too much of ourselves or making too much of ourselves, but in focusing on the strengthening power of God who can do amazing things in and through and with us and for us. What's the anecdote, or the, anecdote, not anecdote, 
antidote, that's the right word, antidote to pride for the Christian. How do we make it more about him and less about us? Well, firstly, we don't want to forget the mission, do we? We don't want to forget the mission of the kingdom. What is the mission of the kingdom? In Christ coming to earth, the kingdom of heaven was breaking through. And Jesus came to break, didn't he? He came to break chains. He came to disrupt the status quo. He comes to disrupt uh, sin and shame and exclusion and oppression and idolatry. He came to destroy these enemies of the soul that we have been speaking about over these these, uh, series of Sunday mornings. Jesus came to disrupt. Jesus came to focus it all on God. He reflected it all back to God. And in his teachings and in his parables, or in this parable as well, he taught that the upside down kingdom of God was focused on two things. Passion and hunger for God and compassion for other people. And John Tyson, who we've been speaking a lot about during this series, who's the uh, pastor, the head, head pastor in the uh, Church of the City in New York, says that when we see God clearly, we see others clearly. And we begin to orientate our lives around those that God desperately seeks to save. The kingdom of God is entered only through humility. Christ came to give us life and life in all its abundance. That's new and renewed life. And that's life that should lead us into the fullness of God and out of self-reliance. We rely totally on God, knowing that through him we are able to do all things. And that it's not all about us, really. It's really about God. It's really about his uh, kingdom. It's about his church. It's about seeking after those that God desperately seeks to save. And that should lead us on a path of humility and recognizing who it is that leads us on this path and gives us life And we're told to be proud of the right things, aren't we? We said that there's a kind of a right kind of pride. There's pride in seeing our our loved ones succeed. There's pride in belonging to a a church and a family and a community that honours God. I want to take pride in being part of a loving community of faith and take pride in who we are in Jesus Christ. Like the tax collector, we know that we're weak, that we're fallen, that we're unworthy, but we know that in turning to Christ, we are redeemed, that we are um, in turning to him in living and following him, we are restored, renewed, strengthened, that we are restored, renewed, strengthened, follower of God. And we're called then to have compassion on and love others because we know God and we're proud of what God has done in us and we want to show that to other people. Psalm 34 says that my soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad and magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name forever. We magnify the name of the Lord. We want all to hear all God's humble loving people. And then as Paul then uh, in 1 Corinthians reflects back to this passage in uh, in Psalm 34 and in other passages earlier in in the prophets, he says, therefore it is written, let one who boasts boast in the Lord. True boasting and true pride is in the Lord because the Lord is actually worthy of being boasted of. You know, the the Lord is, is worthy. We can boast of his greatness and his goodness. We can boast of what he's done for us, of what he's still doing and what he's promised to do. And then finally, the other antidote, I'm going to get it right this time, antidote to pride for the Christian is to look to Christ's example. Simon began our our sermon, or not our sermon, our service, that one, that that began our service looking at these words from Philippians about a, a Jesus, about a son of God who didn't count equality with God, but came as a humble servant. We don't want to link humility to being a pushover or being a doormat, but the desire to be humble is to 
is the desire to love others and to love God. Seeking humility is to seek transformation, to liken ourselves more and more after Jesus, to become more and more like him. And Jesus is that ultimate example of humility. We've said it in our creed. We've said it in our creeds. He humbled himself. He took on our human nature. He came down to earth. And Paul, when he writes to the Philippians, he says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. So treat others, treat your family, your church community, to treat others around you with the same mindset of Christ. Even being God in the same very nature of God shows humility, didn't take it and use it to his advantage. He didn't take and use all that he was to claim all authority for himself, but he used it to glorify God. He used it to serve other people, to take on our human flesh, to become like us, to live the life that we did so that he could identify with us. And his ultimate sign of humility is this cross in that he humbled himself becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. And we see this humility, we recognize it in this season of Lent as Jesus humbly prepares himself for the ministry that's to come. We see it on Good Friday when he gave his very life. We see it at Christmas as he comes as that little baby, as he comes in his incarnation. We see his example in how he lived. In Matthew 11, he says, take my yoke, upon you and learn from me, learn my example from me for I am humble, gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Imagine finding rest in his gentleness and in his humility, finding rest in uh, living out his example of humility and gentleness. If playing God in our lives and seeking only after ourselves, eventually becomes a terrible burden, doesn't it? Because we rely totally on ourselves and we come to the point where we realise we can't actually do it all. We can't actually be in every single place that we might need to be. We cannot do it all. Being loved by God and called to follow him makes the burden light. The burden of Christ's gentleness and humility. In Christ. Our weaknesses are turned to strength and our needs are prepared for. God promises uh, goodness and renewal and abundant life to the humble of heart. And he lifts up those who humble themselves for the good of others. And that's what he says. uh, That's what Jesus says in that little last part of our parable as Ozzy read for us. The humble will be exalted. So we seek Christ likeness. We seek um, to be united with Christ and his example, to conform ourselves after his love, sharing in his spirit as Philippians uh, chapter 2 goes on. We follow after his tenderness and his compassion, and in our like mindedness with Christ, he makes his joy complete. Pride is not thinking too much of ourselves. Pride is thinking of ourselves far too much. We should be thinking far more about following Jesus, about uh, thinking far more about what he does and what he can do and what he has done and what he will do. We care more about sharing God's love and caring about what other people think of us. Imagine to care more about um, sharing God's love and we care about what people might think of us or say about us. We want to care more about living a life that points to Jesus rather than a one that just points back at ourselves. Let's take a moment to pray now. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the example of Christ who came and lived a humble life, not taking pride in who he was and who he was, uh, who, uh, who he was essentially in being God in human form. But he came to live a life, to die on a cross for us, to be resurrected, to intercede for us in heaven. 
after he ascended into heaven to be with his Father. Lord, we pray that we would walk after the example of Christ in humility and in gentleness. And Lord, will we try and take the focus away from ourselves and focus on you and in your Son and in the joy of being united with Christ, enlivened and emboldened by the Spirit. Lord, will we care more for sharing God's love than caring about ourselves and what people think of us. Lord, we make it really about you. It is all about you, really, Lord. We ask and we seek after the strength to live this way, knowing that we need your strength to do that. We thank you that in our weakness, our weaknesses are perfected in your strength, Lord. We are moved and empowered to live in your way, by your strength and by your goodness by your compassion on your mercy that you have on us. And we pray that we would live every day as, as walking, every day as walking examples of your goodness, gentleness, and compassion. Not magnifying or exalting ourselves, but magnifying and exalting and boasting in the goodness and the greatness of God. Pray this in your name.